Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Is some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished them out, vainly I had thought to borrow from my book a piece of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maid whom the angels name Lenore. The silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terror never felt before, so that now, still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, is some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. <laughs> Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, oh, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce but sure I heard it. Here I opened wide the door. Nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was a whispered word, Leno. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Leno, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, went with many a dirt and flutter. In there stepped the saintly rain of the saintly days of yore. Not the least ovation, baby. Not an instant stopped of lady, but with mean of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door. Perched and set, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Oh, But I marveled at this ungainly fowl to hear this court so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, 
bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door with such name as Nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. 